change the um, light and the yep. change the setting? Yep. Okay. No problem. Thanks. No problem. Guys, so let's get started. Um, before we get started, I have to apologize uh, for my fashion faux pas, wearing uh, black shoes and a brown keeper. So I apologize. <laughs> but um, so I've been looking over uh, your comments about how the class is going so far. And I've been looking over, um, you know, it's a, some of the, the things that you guys have to say that things that are working for you and things that are not working for you. And um, I have been fortunate enough to uh, have a, a few of your classmates sort of um, talk to me uh, very frankly about um, what's, what's going on. And um, I will not be telling you who they were, uh, but I really appreciate the, the conversations that I had with them. And so I want you guys, I don't wanna talk about law and equity today because I think that what's more important is that we talk about you guys as people and that you guys feel like you have an understanding of what, uh, what work you're being asked to do in this class and um, how you can succeed in this class. I can see you, Malvin. I have no idea what you're saying. So, so. Um, we're gonna get back to it. We're not. We're not gonna spend the rest of the semester like singing kumbaya and 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 talking to each other. But I think that doing this once is gonna is going to help you guys. Okay, and if it doesn't help you, well, great. You're, you're confident and doing great and I have every faith that you'll be fine, but it may help your classmates. Um, so let me start by telling you guys about um, why we, meaning the lecturers have been to some have been kind of cagey about how you're being assessed. Um, and that's because the uh, central administration has a process for approving assessment plans. Okay, to make sure that you guys are being assessed fairly and, and uh, appropriately. And when the university decided to go to online assessments, we had to resubmit our assessment plans. Um, even if all we were doing was like what I did, which was put the word online in the assessment plan and not actually change anything, um, we still had to go through the process, okay? Central administration said we could not engage in any assessment until that approval process was completed. 
um, it was completed last week. So nothing before last week was allowed to count. Um, and so, for example, I've heard some things about uh, some faculty members assigning lots of work between now and the end of the semester. And, you know, those, those are attempts to make sure that you're getting fairly assessed that have been compressed um, through no fault of our own. Um, I choose to take a different path because I happen to think that assessment is not really about, or it shouldn't be about me ranking you and me telling you how good or how bad you are. Um, assessment should be about ways for you to determine if you have learned what you want to learn out of this class. Um, so I have to assess, I, I can't just sort of like throw A's out into the ether. Um, I have done that before, not here, obviously not here because I've never taught here before, but I, th this past spring, uh, we were all in lockdown from the pandemic. Um, I was leaving the university that I was at to come here. So everybody got an A, whatever, doesn't matter, right? Um, okay. But what I want you guys to feel comfortable with is asking me any questions that you have, whether those questions are, you know, what's gonna be on the final? I can tell you what's gonna be on the final. Anything that we've covered, um, realize that's not a helpful answer. It's the best one I've got, but I want, I don't want you guys to be afraid of me. I don't want you to be worried about me, right? This, this education stuff, this learning stuff, it's hard enough just doing it. You don't need the added stress of being worried that your professors think less of you. So let me tell you, I don't. So I'm going to keep talking, but, and, and I'm just going to sort of ramble until I run out of things to ramble about. Um, and, and if that isn't what's interesting to you, if you need to leave, that's fine, okay? But I want you guys to feel free to interrupt and ask questions about anything, about stuff that's gone on in the class, about, you know, anything, okay? If you're, if you're confused, if you're concerned about something, I want you to be comfortable asking. And I'm gonna stay here and monitor the chat, or you can ask with your voice, right? Whatever works. So somebody, okay. Sorry, I thought somebody had come off mute. Um, okay. So Some of you guys have asked yourself, have, have asked me, you know, in the evaluation, 
in, um, you know, sort of just like in the hallway or in, during office hours, you've asked what's the point of these supplemental readings, right? What's the point of these, these articles that we keep coming across on the syllabus? Um, and here's the point. Some men see the world as it is and ask why. I dream of worlds that never were and ask why not. That's what I want you guys to do when you read these articles. These are different ways to think about property, right? We're learning sort of the traditional approach. We're learning the, the way that property is thought of, but I want you to have the ability to envision other worlds, better worlds, fairer worlds, more just worlds. Because that's the first step to bringing them into existence. That's why we read those articles. That's why we read articles about things like, do you own your own body? Or uh, who owns the beach, right? That's one of the articles that's attached to the unit that we're in right now. So who owns the beach? Uh, that's why we read those articles, is to give you a new way to look at things. Um, another thing that sort of keeps coming up, right, is people say, we, we want you to spend more time thinking about, you know, talking about cases and talking about Caribbean precedents. Um, and uh, unfortunately, right, the, the, um, the problem is that I'm not sort of steeped in that already. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying to learn, but that's not what I already know. And so we're working on trying to improve that. This week's tutorial was trying to take a step in that direction. Um, some of you guys, it sounds like it worked really well for some, some folks had some struggles. We're gonna keep working on that. Um, you know, but I do, I do take that seriously that we're in the Caribbean and we should be focused on how the law works in the Caribbean. And so that, that's my goal is to help you guys understand that. Okay. So, um, now when you ask me something that I'm not prepared for, like last week when suddenly folks were really interested in trust administration, um, I'm going to fall back on what I do know. On what, what I, I'm, I'm going to fall back on what I already know, which is American law. Um, but the stuff I prepare for you guys, I'm going to really focus in on, on giving you Caribbean law. Because that's what you guys need. And that's what, you, that's what you're here for. Okay. So Kashana asks, is there a midterm? Uh, there will not be a midterm exam. Um, there, there will be some other things that we'll do sort of similar to the estates assignment um, that will be sort of small guidepost things along the way where you'll submit written work but there will not be a midterm exam, okay? Um, Kay asks, I wanted to know the major similarities and or differences between Caribbean property law and American law. Um, boy, 
uh, we could probably do a whole class just on that. I mean, like, sorry, a whole course just on that. Um, uh, we can email me. We can we can talk to the dean about doing something along those lines. Um, but uh, but this class is is really going to try and focus on the Caribbean, on getting you guys prepared for law school and for practice. Okay. Um, you know, I. I want you guys to feel um, confident in, you know, when you're answering things for me. So let me tell you a little bit about kind of what I'm looking for when I ask you to write something, right? There are two kinds of questions that I might ask, right? There are questions that you know, short answer type questions, right? Just give me the, the answer to this. I'm not super concerned about how you get to the answer, okay? Because the answer is what matters. There's not gonna be partial credit. There's not gonna, it's just, it's in or out for short answers. So you can be as brief as you want to, to get the point across, okay? But, but then there are questions where you're being asked to, and, and just before I move on, right? The estates assignment is that kind of an assignment where you're just going to give me the answer and I'm not super concerned about what, how, how you get there, okay? The second type of question is an essay type question, right? Where you are being asked to analyze something. And there I really am interested in your reasoning. And one of the students that I talked to told me that um, you guys had a, a professor at one point who told you, oh, write whatever you want, and then was very harsh on your writing. Um, I recognize that there's a once bitten, twice shy thing going on there, right? You know, fool me once, shame on you, etc. Um, Uh, Roseanne, let me, let me finish this point and then I'll answer that question. Um, but I will ask you guys to trust me that when I say to you, I am not really all that concerned about how you write in this class. Now, do not say that I said that to the first years because in semester two, I'm teaching legal writing and then it really will matter how they write, right? Because there will be a specific method of writing that they will have been taught that they need to implement. But in this class where we're learning doctrinal issues, What's important is that you demonstrate that you understand the doctrine. And so I am vastly more concerned with, do you, uh, do you understand and apply the concepts that I'm trying to communicate to you? And as long as I can understand what your answer is saying, I don't care how it's written, okay? The, the one thing that I will warn you guys about is don't speak 
the 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 Creole. Okay, so like I, I'll tell you a story. You know, at the beginning of the semester, Dr. Hippolyte told me that uh, he was dealing with something and he went to get a line. And I went, a what? <laughs> and, and so he had to explain to me that, you know, a lime is a, a quick bite to eat. Um, no clue, right? No clue. So if you... Uh, if you use the sort of local language, if you use like non-standard English, I can't promise that I'll understand it. And if I can't understand it, I can't assess you as having understood what you're trying to communicate to me. Okay, so that's, that's all I'm saying about like writing is I really do encourage you guys to use standard English and not, not the, your local Creole and, um, or if you use your local Creole, explain what you're saying in standard English, right? I'm more than happy to learn the Patois, but you got to teach me, okay? So now, uh, Roseanne's question, just confirming all the assignments that we submitted prior to the approval by the university will count towards our coursework grade. Okay, here is the official answer from the central administration, no. Here is my answer. I am not going to penalize you for uh, if work that you did prior to the approval of the assessment would help you, okay? So um, at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is, is that we're talking may in, in terms of final grades, we're talking maybe a point or two in either direction, just because these are not going to be things that play much role in the weighting of assessments at all. But I'm not going to penalize if, if you're if that one or two points in either direction would make a difference for you, I'm not going to penalize you for it. Okay, um, so does that answer your question, Roseanne? Um, I mean, I think None of you have said this, but my suspicion is that some of you may be thinking, why the hell is he doing this? Why doesn't he just, why doesn't he just teach us property? And it's that I'm not, I'm not here um, to like pour the knowledge into your heads. I'm here because I want to convince you that this is interesting all on its own. And the only way that I will do that is if you trust me. So here I am trying to win your trust. Uh, you know, and I am doing that because you guys have told me that not all of my colleagues take that seriously. I'm not going to speak ill of my of my colleagues. Um, you know, they are brilliant people who I know are committed to your success. Um, but based on what you guys are telling me, not all of them express that commitment as clearly as I might like them to. 
And those are choices that we make and their choices are valid and I'm not, I'm not here to criticize their choices. But I choose differently. I choose to be transparent for you guys. So, um, so that's, that's why we're taking the time to do this because Lord knows we could absolutely be using this time to learn property and that would be great. But I think that this is worth the time to win your trust. So, okay. What other questions do you guys have? It can be about the course material, it can be about the course administration, it can be about the campus, uh, can be any anything, um, anything at all. Uh, I don't promise that I will give you answers to everything but I will at least be straight with you. And I'll tell you, I don't know. I'll tell you, I can't answer that. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna feed you any crap. So any questions that you may have on any topic, everything's fair game. Think of it as Reddit, AMA. Uh, yes, that will that will be assessed because it came due after the approval came in. Um, uh, and to be perfectly frank with you guys, I didn't intend for that to happen when I uh, extended the deadline. But hey, it's a useful. Uh, useful thing. So um, that will be assessed. Uh, it will count towards the coursework portion of the class. Um, but I want to reassure you guys that like, I said, I said this at the beginning of the semester, but I think it bears repeating. You got to work hard to fail my class. Like you got to really, you got to really screw up. Okay. Um, because education is about growth. All right. No, not everyone's going to get A's in my class. Um, and, you know, because of the second examiner system, I can't even promise that you'll all do as well as I think you should do. Um, but um, I have taught a lot of classes where nobody failed. And I do, I, I strongly believe that that's possible in, in all classes. Will you give us a question which would reflect how our final exam might look? Um, you are not the first person to ask me this. Someone asked me this, something similar in um, uh, office hours today. And the answer is I will, um, at some point in the next couple of weeks, post uh, basically a practice final. Um, that will not count. Um, I will probably post the exam and the model answer like at the same time. Um, because it's it's up to you guys like to to sort of test yourselves with that piece of it. Okay. And then to, so does that answer the answer to your question is yes. You will you will have a, a practice final exam to to play around with, and there will be a model answer for you to to look over. Um, you're also welcome to send me 
your answers and I will sort of point you to where it, it where the wheels come off on you. Um, not that they will, right? You're all gonna be great. Um, so. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so. What other questions? Right there. Do we have a proposed time frame for the final exam? Actually, I have an approved time frame for the final exam. Um, so this is one of the things that that went up to the central administration and has come back having been approved. So the final exam will be administered online. Um, to be perfectly frank, I don't remember whether I said a 24 or a 48 hour window in which the exam would be available my guess is I probably said 48 because my instinct is always to give more time. Um, once you download the final exam, you have to submit your responses within six hours. The exam will be constructed with the expectation that it should take you about two hours. And so there's there's a cushion for you to deal with potential internet or tech problems. Um, so that's the plan. Uh, the breakdown for coursework is 20% of your grade is coursework. And anything we do that's not the final counts towards that 20%. And I reserve the right to make adjustments to your coursework grade based on things like participation or uh, you know, things, things of that nature. And I, I should tell you that I conceive of participation extremely broadly, okay? If you have spoken up in class, you are probably on full marks for participation. If you've spoken up in the tutorial, you've got, you're probably on course for full marks in participation. If you've come to office hours, you're, you're, on a, you're on track. If you've emailed me a question, you're on track, okay? I get that not everyone is comfortable sort of sticking themselves out there you know, in class or in tutorial. And so there are lots of ways to participate that don't require you to communicate with anyone but me. You do have to communicate with me. That's, that's not, I, I, can't, I can't assess you for uh, participating in the group chat with your classmates because I don't see it. Um, but if, as long as you're communicating with me, you're good. Okay. All right. What other questions? Okay. Only once. Twice. Okay. If you guys have other questions, you're more than welcome to post them in chat and we'll address them, but let's take these last 15 minutes and talk about some property stuff. Because um, I know a few of you didn't, didn't feel the need for this conversation and would rather get on with it. So, okay. So we talked on Thursday about trusts and how they create equitable interests. Um, we talk, we're talking in tutorials today 
uh, sorry, this week about how contracts give rise to equitable interests through, uh, you know, the, the agreement as good as the deed. Um, and so there's a couple of other ways in which equitable interests arise, okay? One is what's called the equitable charge. And what that is, is it's, it's using property as collateral for a debt, but without the right of seizure. Okay, so if there's a right of seizure, then there's a mortgage. And you'll recall from Thursday, we talked about how mortgages are legal interests. All right, the equitable charge is if you take a mortgage and you remove the right of seizure, that's an equitable charge. How does it work, right? What's the point, right? What's the point of, of securing this debt when there's no right of seizure, okay? When the property is income producing, so it's a rental property or an agricultural property or a commercial property, right? All things that generate income. The equitable charge entitles the creditor to that income. Does this sound like it's any, like it's familiar? Does it sound similar to any other type of equitable interest that we've talked about? Sounds like a trust to me, right? Because we have legal title in, in the hands of the debtor, right? Who has secured the debt using the equitable charge. And then we have the income, the benefit of the property flowing to the creditor who holds the equitable charge. Make sense? Sorry? Sure, right? So we have legal title that is held by the debtor who has executed an equitable charge in order to secure their debt, right? To pay off the debt over time, okay? To provide, to provide proof that repayment will occur. And just as with a trust estate, the income from the property, the benefit of the property goes to someone else. But instead of it being a beneficiary who's just, hey, this is the person that the uh, grantor wanted to have this, it's the creditor of the legal owner who is receiving the income to, to secure this debt. And maybe it counts as repayment, maybe not, right? Maybe the diversion of income is just incentive for the debtor to pay it off. These are all ways that you can structure this, but the key piece of it, the thing that makes it an equitable charge is the use of the income from the property to secure a debt without the right of seizure. So the, the creditor can't come in and take the land. He doesn't have that right, just has the right to receive the income off of it. Does that help? Does that make it make, is it clearer now? What? Monique? Okay. You would tell me if it wasn't, right? Okay. Last way in which equitable interests arise that Professor Owusu talks about, because the truth is equity proliferates. So there's lots of ways for equitable interests to arise. We are focusing on four of them. 
that are sort of the, the key pieces, okay? We've talked about trusts, we've talked about agreements to create legal estates, we've talked about equitable charges. The last one is an equitable lien. So the first thing, Johnny, what did you need me to repeat? Sorry, what do you need me to repeat? Okay, the equitable charge being related to trust. I don't, want to, I don't want you to get confused. The relationship to trust is just a parallel, okay? These are, these are two types of equitable interests that look similar, okay? So that's, that's all, that's the only reason that we're talking about this is that we have a holder of the legal title and then we have a holder of the equitable interest and the holder of the equitable interest is receiving the income from the property. Okay. And that's, that's the sum total of the, of the parallel. Okay. The, the purpose of the equitable charge is to secure a debt and that's not present in a trust. Does that, the, does that make it clearer or sense? Great. Okay. On to equitable liens. Yes. Sure. Right. So trusts, contracts to create legal estates. Okay. Equitable charges, number three, and number four, equitable lien. Okay. So... The equitable lien, first of all, let's start. Yes, go ahead. Somebody came off mute. What's up? Okay, we'll, we'll move on. Um, first of all, what's a lien, right? Liens are rights to retain possession, right? rights or basically rights to demand payment okay rights to demand payment and they attach to property so anybody ever heard of a mechanics lien no just means that if you take your car into the shop and the mechanic fixes it they don't have to give you your car back until you pay okay because they have a lien on the car related to the repair that they did for you. Yes, so, sorry. Yeah, a workman's lien. Yep, same, same thing, right? Um, so an equitable lien basically arises in one context, right? And it's the time period between the execution of a contract and the delivery of the, the performance of the contract, right? The payment, okay? So, you know, if I, if I agree to sell Travis, not to pick on you, um, if I agree to sell Travis a piece of land and we sign a contract, well, once that contract comes into existence, right, and we've, we've closed the, the deal and executed the deed and whatnot, Travis is the legal owner of the property. But I have an equitable lien until he actually pays. Does this, does this make sense? Is this helping? 
I'm seeing some nods. Go ahead. So for the case that we discussed in sort of portion of would that be um, you know, as I was starting to talk about the equitable lien, I was like, boy, this sounds a lot like Walsh versus Lonsdale. Um, it seems to me that the answer to that is yes. That's not a very helpful answer. Let me explain it in a little more detail. Um, it seems to me that uh, Lonsdale could have argued that, mm, sorry, I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking like who would have the equitable lien because the truth of the matter is, is that there was, um, there was delivery, right? Walsh had been paying, he had just been paying quarterly in arrears. Um, he had possession. So there's not really, there's not really the kind of situation where you see an equitable lien arising. Um, if, uh, Lonsdale had delivered possession of the mill to Walsh and then um, Walsh fell behind, right? Wasn't keeping up the payments, then arguably there might have been, there, there would have been equitable lien at that point. And maybe uh, Lonsdale had an argument that he had an equitable lien but he didn't have to, um, like he didn't care because he had his legal remedy in the form of distress. Does that make sense? So it's one of those things where maybe the issue arises, but because of how the case presents itself, it never gets litigated. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Well, that's like the third or fourth time that someone's tried to come in. So let's go ahead and, and wrap things up. Um, we're gonna continue working on this uh, on Thursday and then we'll, we'll move on. Um, I will take a look at the syllabus and sort of see how we need to rejigger to accommodate the fact that we're spending some extra time on this topic. Um, and then we'll, we'll take it from there, okay? So um, again, I, I want to I want to reiterate again that you guys um, you guys should be okay, right? I want you to be okay with with coming to me, even with questions that I tell you annoy me. Like that's okay. That's why I'm here is to be annoyed told a friend of mine that students are simultaneously the best and worst thing of being a teacher. Um, and I do, and I truly believe that. So that you guys are really great and also really annoying. <laughs> so see you guys on, on Thursday, except for the ones that I see tomorrow. So take care. Bye.